The Cuban Streaminole is one of the most coveted lizard species in my collection. Its crocodilian-like features and aquatic adaptations make them unlike any other Caribbean anole, and it's a species I've had the pleasure of breeding in captivity for several years now. And if there was one reptile I wanted to see in the wild, it was this one. That requires, of course, going to Cuba. I've been to the east of Cuba where I got to enjoy the culture and food, go on many amazing adventures, which of course led to finding many amazing reptiles that are endemic and can only be found on the small Caribbean island nation of Cuba. But I needed to go back to see the Cuban Streaminole. With the help of Dr. Luis Diaz, I headed to Havana where we set off on an expedition to find and learn more about the Cuban Streaminole in the wild so I could better keep them in captivity. Our first stop was to drop off our bags at our residence for the next few days, where I ended up spotting my first anole of the trip, Anolus porcatus, or the Cuban green anole. I knew from this early sign it would be a great trip. A quick 10 minute drive to the nearest stream, and I was blown away. Cuban stream anoles everywhere, and I mean everywhere. We saw dozens and dozens of them in a very short time. The population density was so high, I was honestly a bit overwhelmed that finding my dream species in the wild was this easy and happened so fast. Now that I knew finding these stream anoles wouldn't be a problem, I began getting down to business. After observing and enjoying the animals just a little more, of course, I started off by taking ambient temperature and humidity readings to understand the environment better. Then anywhere I saw a stream anole and could access, I took temperature readings along with UV measurements, of course with my handy zoom at UV meter to understand what the lizards were seeking out. One of the coolest interactions was with this big male. He let me and Luis know he saw us immediately. You can see a bit of his habitat and then I tried taking a temp reading of where he was posted up and like a cat with a laser pointer he was ready to eat the red laser from the temperature gun. I found it pretty funny and it became one of the highlights of the trip for sure. I've only had a few bold and outgoing streaminoles in captivity, but seeing this guy really made me realize why I love this species so much. Of course, I got a temp reading and UV reading as close as I could get and moved on to getting readings of other lizards. One problem though, this is herp time and it's not herp time without catching a herp, but these anoles are too fast in the day, which meant we would have to wait for the cover of night when they would be asleep. Fast forward several hours and we started walking back towards the stream where we saw lots of other animals on the way. Sleeping in this tree is a Cuban false chameleon, Anolis barbatus, a now commonly bred and kept pet in the pet trade. With Luis's handy pole, he caught the lizard so we could take a look up close and personal. Seeing this species in the wild really makes you realize how incredible and strange they look. Next, we spotted this broad banded dwarf boa, Tropodopus phycae. It was cruising the plants looking for sleeping anoles to eat. It's a beautiful species with amazing contrast, and to think this is a full-grown adult is wild. A few more endemic species spotted as we get closer to the creek, including this large endemic toad, which kindly let me pick it up. Once we got to the stream, we came across an aquatic water snake that looked like a mini anaconda. And then, Luis saw something. And he caught it, a sleeping male stream anole. It was definitely not happy in being woken up so abruptly, but after some quick observation and finally getting a wild stream anole in my hand, we put it back and I got a few more temp readings while Luis found a sleeping female. It was getting late, so we trekked out so we could do some more herping in the morning because I really wanted to see them again in the day. The next day, the first anole spotted was this female red fanned rock anole basking in this patch of sun. I took some temp readings and used my zoom ed meter to check UV and her male counterpart was clearly not happy that I scared his lady from where he couldn't see her anymore. You can clearly see why they are called the Red Fanned Rockinole. Just check out that bright red dewlap. Back to the main event though, and Luis decided we would catch some streaminoles in the day with a noose. Before anyone freaks out, this does not hurt the lizard. As you can clearly see, he's uninjured and as lively as ever. Getting another big male in my hand, this time in the daytime, was truly a dream come true. This species is so special to me and words can't even begin to describe this feeling. But Luis told me he had a surprise for me after lunch, so I quickly let this guy go so we could head back to the house by noon. We got back in time for lunch, but our hostess told Luis there was something eating the guava fruit from her tree. 
It turned out to be a giant western white-throated anole, or Anolis luteo gularis. Knowing me, I took some readings of where it was, and also knowing me, I had to catch it. I kept the species in captivity, but this wild female was especially beautiful and still had some guava in her mouth. So I decided to let her enjoy the afternoon because Luis and I were headed off to an even more remote and untouched area where we could observe a totally different population of streamers. An hour drive and half hour hike later, we made it to a pristine habitat of another population of Anolis vermiculatus. Again, the population was dense, and for research purposes, we caught a few more just to get an idea of how this population was doing. I took more readings, and though they were in the coolest parts of the stream they could be, they seemed to seek out a little more UV than the previous animals. The icing on the cake was witnessing one of them eat a bug, but we couldn't tell exactly what type of insect it had ate. So naturally, interested in research, we caught it to find out. It ended up being a damselfly, a species I probably can't offer regularly in captivity, but still great information to have. With all the habitat measurements and photos I got, I definitely feel I understand how to better care for my streaminoles at home. But this trip isn't over. We'll get some rest for the night for an early drive to Vinales, where I'll learn more about another extremely unique species I keep, the Cuban cliffinole.